Well, welcome to podcast 1.3.2. How do you detect the earthquake waves? You see, uh, you could have the boy, and he is on his skateboard, and he goes up and down when the waves go up. But how do scientists figure out, well, how big an earthquake is? How do they even detect that there is an earthquake? Now, obviously, if it's a big earthquake, uh, you can feel it probably just standing. But some earthquakes are so small you can't detect it. But you know what? Scientists can detect it. So today we want to learn how that happened. So how does a seismometer work? Well, I think we should ask my friend Bill Nye. And I think Bill Nye, the science guy, he will help us understand how seismometer works. Ha, oh, this is very good. Scientists measure movement of the Earth's surface with seismometers. It's from old words that mean measuring shaking. Measuring shaking. And here's how they work. Here's a, a magnet, very strong magnet. See how that paper clip sticks to it? <laughs> and it's suspended on a point. So it can easily move back and forth. So watch what happens when the surface of the table moves. See, the magnet stays still. And the surface moves this way. It makes an electrical signal in this coil that shows up on this meter. This is how real seismometers work. Real ones, this one. Now this magnet is right here. And it's hung on these springs. Now this seismometer is set up to measure movement of the Earth's surface this way, this direction, up and down. Now if we take the electrical signal from this seismometer and record it, then we call it a seismograph. Seismograph, writing down the shaking. And here's a seismograph right here. Watch what happens when I move my feet up and down. See, I can make the needle move. Look how much it moves. Just bending my knees, I can make the needle go wild. Bill. Oh, sorry. Now back here, we have a whole bunch of seismographs. Look at them, measuring movement of the Earth's surface all over the world. Now these are very accurate and delicate instruments. And scientists know just where they are on the Earth's surface. So by keeping track of where they are and how much they move, scientists can figure out just exactly how the Earth's surface is moving at any time. They're fabulous. You can make your own seismometer. Get a pencil with an eraser. Cut or rub the eraser all the way down so it's really flat. Get it to stick straight up by sticking it into a piece of clay. Put little plastic bottle caps around the pencil, like this. Take a marble and carefully balance it on top of the pencil, like this. If there's a clay, of where the quake came from. Rainy feet. We say cool. The geo words we want to look at are seismometer and seismograph. They kind of sound similar. Seismo, right? There's that word. And seismogram. So we got seismo is kind of the key thing. Here is um, seismometers and seismographs, okay? All right, they measure horizontal and vertical motion is what they do. The ones here, these are kind of the old ones here at the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS. There are these old pieces of paper on these drums right here. And so if we look at these, uh, these here, um, they're kind of sort of the old, old school. Now um, what they've essentially got is they've got ones right here that are all pretty much done on computers. So they're all done on big computer systems now. But it used to be they have this, and there are probably still some of these around. Um, but it's almost all electronic and uh, uh, on computers now. And so here is a seismogram. All right, so it is the piece of paper. As that piece of paper rolls up, it will then uh, record the waves. And I'll show you a little animation that'll help you understand how that works. But first of all, the first waves to arrive are the P waves right here. All right, so this, this right here is the P waves, and this is the S waves. So this is like the piece of paper, it could be done electronically. And then lastly, you get the surface waves. So let's think about which comes first, which is the fastest. That's right, the P waves are the fastest waves, and the surface waves are the slowest waves. The surface waves are the ones, as we talked about earlier, that cause the greatest damage. But actually, this time interval teaches us a lot of things. Okay, and here's actually a, a different picture of how it would look. Um, here is a number of minutes. Time um, since the earthquake at zero, 
right here. And so here would be one station right here. So this would be one place right here. And we can see that wave right here. The, the blue would be your primary wave. And then we're at a distance. So we have a different, different uh, maybe another detector. Let's say someone who's 100 um, degrees away. Degrees. I'm not sure how that way it's degrees. Anyways, yeah, uh, that's a picture. Let's not worry about that. Okay. Let's do that animation actually right now before we get into the content. So here's how a seismometer works. Here we have um, some graph paper. Let me put you play. You get a drum roll here, not like a drrr, but you know. and then you put a, a heavy weighted thing with a, just an ink pen on it. We're gonna have an earthquake. See now, did you just record no earthquake? Boom! There's an earthquake. Notice how it makes that pattern. All right, and as it moves back and forth, and now we can take that piece of paper over here and we can analyze what that piece of paper looks like. First the P's, then the S, and, that's, and then the surface waves. So let's do that again here. So we've got the, the uh, piece of paper on a heavy drum, and it just is constantly spinning. And then we have a piece of, uh, uh, just a pen, if you will, with a heavy weight, no earthquake. Earthquake! Ah, all the waves. We take the piece of paper over here, we analyze it, and that's what we get. Here's another uh, animation that will help us to look at. Similar kind of idea, you've got the heavy pin right there. It's going, all of a sudden we're gonna get an earthquake. Boom, you get the pattern and you get the idea. There's different designs of different, uh, um, uh, of different uh, seismometers. Um, the, this is the seismometer, the device, and it makes the piece of paper, which is down here, which is the seismograph. So make sure you understand the difference between the two. So let's uh, hit some content pieces here. So what do we got to learn here? Okay, get my thing to go. Here we go. Seismometers use the principle of inertia. Now inertia means that things, once they're in motion, don't like to change being out of motion, or if something's at rest, it stays at rest. It's one of uh, Newton's laws. So if you have um, an object, particularly a heavy object, it doesn't like to move. Hence the concept of you got the drums, right? And we saw that in the animation. It doesn't want to move, and so it makes just a nice straight line. But if the Earth shakes, then that can cause this pattern to change. So it's using the principle of inertia. That's how seismometers work. All right. Now, a side note here is that other things cause ground motion. What I mean by that is, is that other things can cause the seismometer to move. So, for example, if you uh, blow a bomb up near your seismometer, it's going to record the earth shaking. But it won't really be an earthquake, you see. Or even if somebody walks on top of a seismometer, that could cause it to shake. Or if you uh, build your seismometer close to a, a major highway, um, the rumbling of the cars and all that will cause it. So it's actually important to put your seismometers in places that don't have a lot of traffic, if you will, not a lot of, uh, uh, of um, just sort of other things that could cause the earth to move, okay? Now you probably know this, or it seems in intuitive, but I want to say this, the closer the earthquake, the closer the waves occur. So if you are close to the earthquake, so here you are right here, and you happen to be close to the epicenter of an earthquake, okay, the earthquake,